Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we will be talking about how to travel Switzerland on a budget. Switzerland is one of the top destinations of many travellers but at the same time it has always been touted as one of the most expensive places to travel. However, that doesn't mean that there is no other possibilities for you to travel Switzerland on a budget and in this video we'll be talking exactly on how to do so. I will be sharing a few tips along the way ranging from cheaper accommodations to value for money travel passes as well as time of free attractions that you can visit all without breaking the bank. So this is definitely something that will come in handy when you're planning your Swiss itinerary so make sure you watch all the way to the end and without further ado let's get going. The first tip I have for you is to consider getting the Swiss travel pass. In the past I used to found it like a bit too expensive considering that for an 8 day pass it is worth 329 francs but I've come to realize that if you're someone that is considering coming to Switzerland for an extended period of time say like two weeks for days i think that is the most worth it option because that is about 429 francs but it really covers you for all of your transport and also i think the better part is that it includes a lot of the museums and provide free entries for these museums which would otherwise have cost you quite a bit and already quite a substantial part of your budget some of the museums that i know are covered under the free uh, free passes for the Swiss travel pass would be for example the Olympic Museum in Lausanne, uh, La Maison de Gruyère and also um, the Swiss Transport Museum as well as the Xion Castle. These are like some of the more popular ones. And the second part is also that you can have the option to choose a Swiss pass, Swiss travel pass flex. That is to say that for the time that you're not traveling, doing intercity travel, you can give a pause to your pass and then you only use it on the days that you're traveling um, between cities. So that makes your pass last longer and it's also more value for money because you're using it strategically for the times and the periods that you will be doing a lot of frequent travel. So definitely consider the Swiss travel pass and specifically the flex option. The second useful tip I have for you is to look out for city guest cars. So this would apply for those of you that are not getting a Swiss travel pass. You're probably uh, using the half ride card, which means to say you will be paying for um, your regular tickets just with a half price, you still have to pay. But if you were to look out for this uh, city guest cards that are offered by some cities and regions, it goes to say that you can get to travel within the city and the region complimentary for free. So some of the cities that I know provide uh, guest cards for tourists would be Lucerne, Bern, Geneva and Basel and the best one is the one in Ticino because it offers free transport around the entire region so that's the most worth it. And for these cards usually it's not just um, free transportation it also provides discounts uh, to the attractions and the museums as well. So do check in with your reception if there is any of such cards available at the hotel or the Airbnb that you're staying. The third tip I have for you is to consider traveling during uh, low seasons. Specifically for Switzerland, there are two main peaks uh, for holidays. The first would be during the summer uh, from June to August and the second is during the winter season from December to February. So low season in Switzerland would be considered between April to May as well as from September to November. So during these periods, you will find that hotel accommodations are possibly cheaper and you will also find more vacant vacancies, it's easier to get our reservations and also hotel bookings. However, there's one specific month that I would really advise you to avoid and that is November. It happens to be my birthday month but it's just awful in November because it is always raining, like it's grey, it's cold and also during the month of November, this is usually the time that most of the mountains would be closed down for maintenance of um, the cable ways, the cable cars. So you're likely not going to be able to go to attractions for example, uh, in Gonagrad or for example, Grindelwald, these are places that are most likely going to be closed. So much as though the cost um, of traveling might be lower during this time, but you are most likely going to be stuck indoors. The fourth tip I have is to skip the breakfast. For me personally, I do not like breakfast in Switzerland or, or maybe just general in Europe. Like it's always the same. It's always eggs, cheese, some ham and then muesli. You know, it's very predictable and in Switzerland, like the typical breakfast per person can cost up to 30 francs, 30 francs for a single adult. And if you were to add up 
um, two persons for a couple of days that could be like 100 of francs just for breakfast which you can easily save up on it so my tip here is to go for a hotel accommodation option that allows you uh, to skip the breakfast option you can easily get you know like your croissant or coffee at co-op or migro and it won't cost you more than 10 francs so this is a straightforward way to just cut down costs in your itinerary planning the next budget tip i have for you is to download the app too good to go this is a fabulous app it's basically like an app that allows you to buy food at after um after peak hours at discounted prices from restaurants from cafes and also from supermarkets so once you download the app you should uh, enable the location services and based on where you are which city you are in it will provide you with a list of all the participating restaurants or cafes or supermarkets and you can go pick up um, your basket it's a random basket you don't get to choose they will just give you whatever that is left from the day but they are always like good and fresh options and uh, the, the stores that I typically like to go is the one that is always by the train station it's called pretzel Konig, and it's very good I always go for their for their pretzels uh, when I go on day trips because uh, they have nice sandwiches and it's super worth it it was like originally it was the price of 15 francs but you just pay 490 francs for it so that's like almost one third of the cost so that's a great way for you uh, if you're going out on on a day trip and you want to get a sandwich consider too good to go and if you don't feel like downloading the app there's also another option that is you can consider going to like supermarkets uh, during the evening times like from 5 30 onwards usually there will be like more discounts uh, on on fresh food items maybe for sushi uh, and for sandwiches they are always um, heavily discounted after peak hours during the evening time if you have reached this part of the video and you found my information here helpful or interesting you can give this video a thumbs up and also hit on the subscribe button that will help me out so much you can also consider supporting the channel by buying me a virtual coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash olichini if you are also looking for someone to help you with your trip planning I'm currently offering one-to-one -one customized itinerary consultation so do do leave a comment down below if you need help in this manner. I will be glad to give you some advice on this. Without further ado, let's get back into the video. The next tip is to stay outside the city center. I'm sorry, but I have to tell you that if you're going to be staying in Zurich or in Zermatt or in Interlaken, there's no way that you're going to be able to be traveling on a budget because these places hold their prices there's no need for them to compete with other hotels because tourists are flocking in daily so it makes no sense i mean you're definitely going to be paying a lot more premium for um, the, the hotel accommodations but instead what you can do is to just stay a little bit outskirt maybe for example if you're going to zamad you can consider staying at vips uh, which is really like just maybe like 15 minutes away by train or if you're going to be in Geneva or Lausanne you can consider staying at my town Mosh this is super nice as well during the springtime so yeah I'm just staying outside of the city center and in fact you might be glad that you're uh, staying somewhere a bit further away away from the crowds and you will kind of appreciate the peace and quiet that you get during the evening time when you're back from your day trip the next tip might sound very uncommon but it is to consider staying in hostels so i mean hostels always sound to me like huh isn't it for like backpackers or you know students but in fact there are some independent hostels in switzerland that are very very budget friendly but also comes with premium services like a private room so it, it means that you don't have to be sharing bunks you know with a bunch of other young people and the options are definitely much more affordable as compared to say a three-star or a four-star hotel so these are definitely much more budget-friendly options and some of the examples that i've seen before uh, that people gave good reviews about and my friends have also said before are the one in Lucerne is called Backpackers Lucerne as well as the panoramic St. Moritz Youth Hostels so you know it doesn't mean that hostels means it's shady it's, um, it's crappy but it can also be nice especially if you were to get a room by yourself and then you still get the, the, the privacy and all but it's not as expensive as compared to um, other more luxurious accommodations for families or couples that are coming during summer a great 
option that is also budget friendly but at the same time super unique and special would be considering a farm stay and you can look up this farm stays at this website Agro Tourism Switzerland where it leaves a whole um, all the different farm stays around Switzerland based on the regions that you are intending to explore and the prices typically hover between 25 to 35 francs per person per night and they include breakfast and some even allow you to stay in the barn like with the hay with the animals so if you're someone that is super adventurous and you're looking for a different kind of experience in the mountains in the farms this is a great option for you and you get to save some money the next tip is to go on free walking tours i know that a lot of activities in switzerland tend to be quite expensive but if you were to do some research beforehand there are actually um, free activities that you can enjoy and at the same time also explore and learn more about the city or the and the region that you're in and i think that free walking tours is really a good way for you um, to interact with locals and also learn more about the history and the culture of the place. Um, these walking tours are usually run by local volunteers. Normally, they are local inhabitants of the city and they are very, very experienced and well-known of their environment, of the surroundings, and they will be able to give you like a one-hour tour of the city. I've been to one about three years ago when I was in Interlaken. And, you know, if not for this guide that showed me around Interlaken, I think it would just be like another tourist attraction that I know just, just to visit, but without really knowing much of the place. So I really appreciated that about you know going on a guided tour and having someone explain um, the past of the city um, to me even though these are free walking tours but of course at the end of the day it will be really nice if you were to give your guide a, a, an amount or a tip that you're comfortable with just to appreciate the person for the time and the effort that he has spent with you Another tip I have for you is to have a base camp and to do more day trips out of it. If you were to always change your locations uh, every other day, it can get quite costly simply because um, the, the, the charges that you're paying per night is higher than if you were to stay um, say for four to five days in a single in a single place usually the hotel rates are much more uh, competitive it's much lower and also for places such as Zurich it's actually quite easy for you to go to other cities for example Bern is just like an hour away and it's also not that far away from Zurich from Schaffhausen to the Rhine Falls and also um, to St. Gallen so you know just by using Zurich as a base you can already spend the next four or five days just doing easy day trips out and that way you get to save more on um, your hotel accommodation. This works especially well if you're using a Swiss travel pass so that way um, it covers the cost of your return for your day trip. The last tip I have for you is to drink from the tap or the fountain. If you were to be going to restaurants in Switzerland and you ask for bottled water like sparkling or still water, you will be expecting to pay between 8 to 10 francs just for boiled water but you can ask the waiter to provide you with tap water and that's free and also if you were to go out for hiking you know just up and about you don't have to always buy bottled water at the supermarket because first of all it's, it's detrimental for the environment and secondly there's tons of fountains all around um, especially in the cities and even in the mountains where you can just refill your water and they are all clean and safe to drink so just alone in Zurich there's like 1,200 fountains all around the city so you know you're getting free water from from the mountain so why not right and there you have it all my tips and tricks on how to travel switzerland on a budget i hope you enjoyed this video and you found information useful if you happen to have any other sharings or suggestions do feel free to leave it down in the comments below so that other travelers can benefit from your sharing and if you're still looking for more help with your planning for your swiss itinerary you may want to check out this video here where i share about the top 10 mistakes that tourists make in switzerland make sure you watch this video before you come to Switzerland so you don't repeat the same mistakes yourself. That's all I have and I thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in my next one. Bye!